happy evening a very good evening i hope and i believe all of you are doing well a quick note whether the audio visual is all good Good. Okay, that's great. So here we are to discuss the top 10 mnemonics and ophthalmology. Basically, all of these are very, very important. And the day does not end here because we have two more sessions today itself. Like this in itself is the second session. We had today a plus class on an academy app, uh, right, where we discuss psychiatry mnemonics. Okay, so what is the plan after this session? Basically, immediately after this session is over, so at 8 p.m., we are going to have KBMD. I, I believe it's been long. It's almost like 10 days or so that we have not had KBMD session. Uh, no, so the 8 p.m. Divya is going to be at 8 p.m. itself. So it's a KBMD, that is Con Banega MD, which is a fun way of learning the tricks of how to solve the MCQs. Uh, it's again a mixed bag clinical long stem MCQs and also the one line mnemonics based mcqs so very very high yield session at 8 pm uh, then at 10 30 pm uh, we have the youtube live session on an academy youtube channel where we are going to talk about the strategy for fmg students on how you should be catering to grand test are grand tests important why are they important how should you uh, take them and what are the things that you should keep in mind when you are giving grand test or reviewing the grand test all of those is uh, basically we'll be discussing at 10 30 pm okay so this is the plan for today 8 pm and 10 30 pm so yes ayushi that's what at 8 pm we have the kbmd a very very interesting one a lot of concepts will be decoded and mnemonics as well so make sure you do that and yes uh, next what we are going to have is uh, today was the last day when we finished the daily targets the timetable that was going on on telegram group so uh, what we would be doing is the next three days that is uh, 8 and 9th and even 10th use the next three days 8 9 10 basically to refresh yourself to re rejuvenate to revise and to cover the backlogs whatever you might have had from the previous uh, you know the daily targets and then from 11th we will be starting the new daily targets the timetable and this one we would be focusing uh, in uh, such a way that uh, basically the inict is also catered to okay so uh, Right, so we will have a revision uh, revision timetable which we will be starting from 11th of October, okay. So what we'll be doing is okay, because the INICT is also coming up, you can give yourself that false deadline even if you are not giving the INICT exam to complete uh, the one revision in the next one month, okay. Huh. So, wo abhi hum, uh, karne wale hai. All right. So, we'll have one revision timetable for one month and then after November, then we'll have more revision cycles, right. And uh, for this, for the 11th timetable, we'll be having the YouTube live session where we will be discussing the timetable on 10th. So, 10th uh, is when we would be having the timetable discussion. The YouTube live session is what we are going to do at 6 p.m. Right? Sounds good. Anybody has any problem that if we do this one month ka timetable, I know that it's relatively short. The first revision, we should be giving longer time. But just because the INICT is also coming up and we know that the Parkinson's law so, uh, the less of the time you do, the faster the speed increases of studying. Okay? Yes, uh, absolutely, we'll be uh, doing everything, P, don't worry about that. Already, there's a mnemonics batch which is going on on the Anacademy app that I'm taking for the last minute revision. Okay? Mehek, I've taken uh, 72 episodes in NF100. All right. Okay, so let's start. We have to again need to have a session at 8 p.m. So let's quickly uh, uh, right cover this ophthalmology mnemonics. And uh, yes, um, a quick update 
Uh, I'm sure all of you must be aware of the 150 short short topics uh, that the session, the offline session that I'm taking at Hyderabad. This is the venue, Bharatiya Vidya Bhavan, King Koti, Hyderabad. And that is on 1st and 2nd of November. And we are also having it at Delhi. The first session here in Delhi, which is on 9th and 10th of October, is uh, focusing on the FMG previous year questions and the previous year topics. So basically to help the FMG students get that 150 score. We have been getting a lot of queries. Is this also for NEET PG students? We will be doing a dedicated session for the NEET PG students as well, maybe later on in December or January. But the NEET PG students uh, can also attend this as well because this will be like a preliminary session where you'll get to learn a lot of mnemonics and tricks which will help you in strategizing your studies, right? So this you can use as like a trailer class and then you can attend the final NEET PG Wala class as well provided you have the time as well, okay? So, on, please let me tell you that both of these are only offline sessions, no online sessions. Online things is going on on an academy app as well. Okay. And uh, uh, for 1st and 2nd of November, Hyderabad, uh, the seats are already filled. So, we have uh, started uh, taking up uh, the names for the next session as well. We are planning to have one more session in Hyderabad. So, you can let us know on this number if you did not get a seat this time. So, next time we will notify you when we come up uh, with the next session. And all the students uh, here who are in Delhi, especially the FMD students and as I said, NEET PG students who want to learn easy tricks and mnemonics, you can get yourself registered for the 9th and 10th of October session uh, at Delhi. It's a face-to-face -face offline class itself and this is the link to get registered. Okay. All right. And... Uh, YouTube motivation videos, everything would be back. Uh, caught up with a lot of things. Uh, I hope we'll be back uh, soon. Okay. All right. Plus subscribers, my heck, already we are doing on Unacademy a lot of things. So I think that should suffice if you're there on Unacademy. Okay. Okay. Let's start with the mnemonics. The first one, uh, this we have discussed so many times. I hope all of you get this one right. Indirect of thalmoscopy, image formed is what kind of image? Direct ophthalmoscopy image formed is uh, what kind of image, right? What is the mnemonic to be remembered here? Yes, the mnemonic to be remembered here, remember it is DEV15. Remember it's DEV15 that is indirect ophthalmoscopy, the image is erect and virtual and it is 15 times magnified. Okay, so remember it is erect and virtual. Uh, never the image is inverted and virtual. It's erect and virtual. Right, and remember it is 15 times magnified. Why in indirect ophthalmoscopy? It is the opposite. Erect ka ulta inverted, virtual ka opposite real, and the magnification is 5x time. So, inverted and real is indirect ophthalmoscopy, and it is 5 times magnified. Okay. <laughs> Anjali, I know we have got so used to the polls on Unacademy. We don't have any polls here on YouTube. But I'm definitely seeing this. Who's getting it right in the live chat? So you can definitely uh, get your fastest finger first in the live chat. Okay. So remember that uh, direct of thalmoscopy, basically it is the day 15. That is, it is erect and virtual and it is 15 times magnified. Okay. It's 15 times magnified. All right. Now, uh, going to the next one. All of the following drugs for glaucoma act by reducing the aqueous humor production except which of the following? All of the following drugs for glaucoma act by reducing the aqueous humor production except which of the following? Basically glaucoma, the increased intraocular pressure because of the increased aqueous humor, because of the increased production or the decreased flow. So. What do you think is the answer? Very good. Who has got it right? The first Sachin and then we have Sayantan, Charu, Anjali. Right. It's Letanoprost. So here the tricks, there's a complete session on glaucoma drugs uh, right on this YouTube channel itself. You can go back and watch that. We have discussed the mnemonics that. Okay. So uh, what do we have is remember that the drugs which act by decreasing the production. What is the mnemonic for drugs acting by decrease the production? It's A. B, C, right? A, B, C are the drugs which act by decreasing the production. And that is, you can remember A, B, C or you can also remember as CAB, 
that is the same CAB or ABC. So, alpha agonist, remember it is AA, it is BB, that is beta blocker and C is carbonic anhydrase inhibitor. So, epinephrine um, basically is uh, alpha agonist, so it acts by that, timolol is beta blocker, acetazolamide basically is uh, carbonic anhydrase inhibitor, so remember ABC. Letanoprost, as the term says, letanoprost is a prostaglandin. Which prostaglandin is it? DEFI. It is PGF2 alpha. Okay, remember this is PGF2 alpha. Remember F for flow. It acts by increasing the flow. Which flow? Trabecular outflow or the uveoscleral outflow. There are two pathways by which the aqueous humor can go out. So, remember it is not trabecular. It is the uveoscleral outflow another important question the drugs which act by increasing the uveoscleral outflow is prostaglandins the drugs which act by increasing the trabecular outflow trabecular outflow basically iot increase outflow through the trabeculae is meiotic drugs okay the meiotic drugs cholinergic like pilocarpin so remember meiotic increases the outflow through the trabeculae Okay, so that is pilocarpin, that is a cholinergic drug. Okay, that is meiotic increase outflow through trabeculae. So, glaucoma drugs, mechanism of action, side effects, entire topic is very, very important. You get a question on that very frequently. So, make sure you revise that before your exam. Okay. Uh, next one, what do you think is the diagnosis here? What do you think is the diagnosis? Is it retinitis pigmentosa? Is it Best disease? Is it Stargardt's disease? Or it is sickle cell anemia? Who has got this right? Divya. Very good. Divya, Ayushi, Sayantan. Now, uh, easy tricks to identify this fundus images, all the Unacademy Plus subscribers, you can watch the fundus images detailed class I have taken on the plus and the tricks on how to identify, we have done in the recent ophthal mnemonics class as well. Retinitis pigmentosa, remember like pigment, it shows the black pigment, actually it is not a pigment but, but just for our remembering. Remember the pigment, basically we would see the black, black color, that is the bony spicules is what we would see. It's black color. We don't see anything black here. Best disease, remember best source, okay, the best source of protein, we have the egg. So, remember it has the egg yolk appearance. Star guards disease, imagine the stars, okay, the stars are scattered in the sky, in the night sky. So, night sky is basically the dark sky which is the dark choroid or the silent choroid. So, we have dark choroid or the silent choroid with the stars. Those stars represent the pisiform flex, right? Basically, those are the pisiform flex that we are seeing in this image. And sickle cell anemia, remember CC, it is C fan retinopathy, okay? C fan retinopathy. So, look at this image here. Basically, you can see this, uh, the yellow, yellow color like the stars scattered. So, that is star guards disease. That is the flex, the pisiform flex that are seen in star guards. Okay. So, remember that uh, this is star guards, which is basically like the stars, the yellow flex in the dark sky, which is the dark choroid. Pigmentosa will have the bony spicules. Best is the egg yolk appearance. Sickle cell anemia is the C fan retinopathy. Okay, C fan retinopathy. All right. Let's go to the next one. What do you think the nodules shown in the image are which of the following? Are those Lish nodules, are those Coppes, Basakas, or Dallin Fuchs nodules? What nodules are this which you see here? Very good. Who has got it right the first? I can see Shubham, then Sayantan. 
uh, right bindu divya absolutely right remember these are not basakas right don't mark it as basakas these are copies nodules okay copies nodules so remember copies nodules versus the basakas nodules so you have these are the nodules which are basically seen in uveitis right these are seen in uveitis these are the aggregates of the epithelial cells and all so copies remember is the pupil periphery basakas is the surface so remember copies is pp what is pp basically standing for copies is present on the pupil periphery that is the margin of the pupil basakas is s which is basically surface of the iris okay the mid surface of the iris so what are we seeing in this image basically is this is the pupil right this is the pupil and on the pupil periphery basically we have the nodules so basically these are copies nodules so look at this one these are the copies nodules and these one which you see on the surface this is the pupil and then we have the iris ka surface these are the basaka nodules okay these are the basaka nodules so that is the trick to remember basically remember copies is pupil periphery right and basakas is the surface of the iris that is how you would identify the image all right going to the next one very very important and a frequently asked question iris muscles are derived from which of the following derm layer surface ectoderm neuroectoderm mesoderm or the neural crest cell iris muscles is derived from very good who has got it uh, right the first very good uh, we have ramesh some students are getting it wrong as well remember it is neuroectoderm it is not the neural crest cell or it is not the mesoderm it's not the neural crest cell it is the neuroectoderm which are the muscles of the iris basically acting on the pupil the dilator pupillae and the sphincter pupillae okay so iris muscles are basically the pupil wale muscles the sphincter and the dilator pupillae and these are derived from neuroectoderm remember it's not the neural crest cell you can remember this as mine okay mine is basically the muscles of the iris are derived from ne that is neuroectoderm okay that's a trick to be remembered so remember it is neuroectoderm so the muscles in the eye what muscles in the eye do we have the three type of muscles the extraocular muscles the iris muscles and the ciliary muscles extraocular muscles are derived from mesoderm iris muscles is neuroectoderm and ciliary muscle c for crest remember those are the ones which are derived from the neural crest cell the ciliary muscle iris mine muscles of iris are derived from neuroectoderm right lens another important question lens is from the surface ectoderm okay remember lens is from the surface ectoderm another important question which is asked so here remember iris muscles m i n e mine is the trick to be remembered it is derived from neuroectoderm okay next question what do you think is the primary action of the muscle which is shown in green here this muscle here what do you think is the primary action of this muscle primary action of the muscle shown in green is very good who has got it right uh, shubham and dr ashish sayantan again very good what muscle is shown in the green color here basically what muscle is shown in green here remember this is not a straight muscle right these are the straight muscles that we are seeing okay these are the straight muscles going straight straight muscles are the rectus muscles the one which curve around like this muscle which is going through this pulley or the trochlea superior so this is superior oblique it's present up so this is superior oblique going through the pulley or the trochlea 
This one is again oblique course, a curved course. It's not a straight muscle. This is inferior oblique muscle, right? Present inferiorly. So you can see that this is the inferior oblique muscle which arises from the maxilla. Okay. So for the inferior oblique muscle, the primary action is neither. Uh, rest mehik, I mentioned we have the KBMD immediately after this class at 8 p.m. Okay. Inferior oblique, the primary action is going to be in torsion or extorsion. Because for rectus muscles, remember the primary action rectus means straight. Okay. Rectus means straight. That means whatever is their name, that is their action. They are straight in action. Jaisa naam, vesa kaam. So, superior rectus, primary action would be superior. That is elevation. Inferior rectus, primary action would be depression. Medial rectus, medial, that is adduction. Lateral rectus would be abduction. So, for the rectus muscles, that is the straight action, which is the primary action. So, for inferior oblique, it's not depression or abduction. It's the torsion, mother. In torsion or extorsion. So, we all know the mnemonic that is SINRAD. Superiors are in torters. So, inferior is an extorter. So, the primary action is going to be extorsion. In torsion will be for superior oblique ka primary action. Okay. So, that is what the trick is. It is extorsion which is the primary action. So, remember for oblique muscles. So, when you write oblique. Remember oblique when I write it's circular. Wala, that's the torsion thing. So, for the oblique muscles, the primary action is the torsion. Superior is intorter, inferior is extorter. We have discussed in detail the actions, the primary, secondary and tertiary. This is the entire table. We have discussed this in detail in the recent plus class also. Okay. Uh, let's go to the next one. In right sided six nerve palsy, all of the following are seen except... In right-sided sixth nerve palsy, all of the following are seen except. Very good, Sainthan. Head turned to the left side. Yes, correct. Uh, so, when I say it's right-sided sixth nerve palsy, what muscle the sixth nerve supplies? Remember, it is LR6. So, basically, it supplies lateral rectus. What is the action of lateral rectus? It is abduction. Lateral will take laterally. It's abduction. So, when uh, the abduction is lost, the eye will be deviated inside. So, inside is a convergent. Going inside is a convergent squint. Right-sided abduction will go because the lateral rectus is gone. There is diplopia on dextroversion. So, basically, whichever muscle is paralyzed, if you ask the patient to look in the direction of that muscle action, like lateral rectus does abduction, that is dextroversion basically. So, when you ask the patient to look towards the right, this muscle is paralyzed, the diplopia increases. Right? We have, we have discussed this like it's basically jalepen namak chidakna. Agar a patient ko bolte ho ki jaha uh, the muscle which is paralyzed, uske action ke direction mein dekho, that will increase the diplopia. Because that particular muscle is not able to act. So, remember diplopia for the right lateral rectus will increase on dextroversion. For the left lateral rectus, it will increase on levoversion, looking to the left, right? Now, because uh, there is um, lateral rectus, right is paralyzed, so dextroversion is not possible. So, if the eye cannot move, the head takes over the responsibility, right? So, that is how if one person cannot do, the other person takes the responsibility. Like, if you are not able to do, I will do it. So, the head says, if the eye is not able to do, let me do it for the eye. So, if the eye cannot see to the right, the head turns to the right. Okay, so basically in right-sided sixth nerve palsy, the head will turn towards the right. So, whatever is the action of the paralyzed muscle, the head will turn in that direction to take over the responsibility of the eye. Okay, so because for right lateral rectus is dextroversion, the right side is gone. So, that is why the head will turn to the right side. Okay, so remember the head will not be turned to left, but the head will be turned to right. That is what we need to understand here. Okay. 
everybody is clear with this look at this image so what are we seeing this is a convergent squint esotropia because of the right lateral rectus palsy that is the right sixth nerve palsy okay it will not the abduction will be lost the head will be turned to the right the diplopia will increase when the patient uh, sees on the right okay all right so that is uh, about this uh, question okay let's go to the next one this visual field defect is seen in the lesion of which of the following lobes the visual field defect is seen in lesion of very good who has got it right the first uh sayantan again and i can see divya dr ashish ali azad uh getting this right the correct answer here is d visual field defect is a very very important topic be it a clinical scenario or the image based question now what do you see this is the left side and this is the right side okay so what visual field defect we are seeing here this is a quadrantonopia a quadrant is affected and it is inferior quadrantonopia is it right side or is it left side which quadrantonopia this is the left side right like you can see in the image r left is the patient's left so this is the left side and this is the right side okay so this is right side which is affected so basically this is right inferior quadrantonopia that is right inferior means on the floor so this is also called as pi on the floor right it is right pi on the floor so inferior quadrantonopia will be seen when it's a superior lobe which is affected okay superior lobe basically out of the parietal lobe and the temporal lobe which is located superiorly it's a parietal we know that when we draw the brain ka image like this the parietal is located here the temporal is here so parietal is located superiorly it does the opposite visual field defect that is inferior quadrantonopia temporal is located down it does the opposite that is superior quadrantonopia and remember it's a contralateral side if it is the right inferior quadrantonopia it is the opposite the left superior that is the left parietal lobe so it's contralateral inferior ka ulta is superior wala lobe so this is going to be the left parietal lobe okay left parietal lobe right the bombs loop temporal wala lobe is the uh, mayer's loop so when it is a temporal lobe which is gone let's say it's the right temporal lobe right will cause the left side ka visual defect temporal is the inferior lobe it causes the superior quadrantonopia so in that case you would see the left superior quadrantonopia that is like this okay so you will see this superiorly pi in the sky that is superior so remember pi on the floor is the superior lobe parietal so you know that the answer is not temporal for sure okay it is parietal this is the right side so the opposite that is the left parietal lobe that is what is going to be the answer for right inferior uh, it is going to be the left parietal lobe clear with everyone all right theek hai now quickly seeing uh, the trick we have discussed in one of the previous videos also and in the recent class as well for the park three step test remember the mnemonic is basically tone gores okay what's the mnemonic for the park three step test the mnemonic is so imagine uh, remember this image which is a tone gauze okay write it like this it is tone gauze so tilt opposite is rectus and gaze opposite is superior that is what the mnemonic is when i write tone gauze okay so remember tilt opposite is rectus gaze opposite is superior what is tilt opposite gaze opposite so let's say the patient has right hypertropia okay the patient has a right hypertrophia give me a minute hmm right hypertrophia which is worsening on the left tilt and on the left gaze so right ka opposite left right ka opposite left so tilt opposite this is going to be rectus muscle gaze opposite this is going to be superior muscle so this is 
superior rectus which is paralyzed that is how we identify okay so remember that if it's a gaze opposite it is a, it is a superior muscle okay always we compare this with respect to the hypertrophic muscle so let's try solving this one if there's a patient who has left hypertrophia which increases that is worsens on the right gaze and on the right tilt the hypertrophic side is the left then you have right and right both are opposite tilt opposite is the rectus muscle okay so remember this is going to be the rectus muscle gaze is also opposite so this is going to be superior muscle so the muscle affected is superior rectus now is it right superior rectus or left superior rectus identify this muscle that you have got superior rectus is it going is it a elevator or is it a depressor what is the action of superior rectus it is elevation it is elevator so remember elevator when i write it is opposite side if the action is depression depression double s it is going to be same side muscle as the hypertrophia so this is elevator opposite side so left ka opposite is going to be right so this is going to be right superior rectus muscle okay let's try to do uh, this one okay let's try to solve this question there is right hypertrophia which increases on the left gaze and the right tilt right hypertrophia tilt is not opposite it's the same it's a right tilt which is increasing tilt opposite is rectus right tilt opposite is rectus so tilt same side is going to be oblique muscle so it's a oblique muscle that we have gone gaze is opposite gaze opposite is superior so this is superior oblique muscle that we have got right so this is a superior oblique muscle that we have got now right side or left side what is the action of superior oblique the action of superior oblique is depression okay it's a depressor so same side as the hypertrophia that is going to be right superior oblique muscle which is paralyzed okay that is how you will be solving this question okay so this is basically right superior oblique okay right superior oblique clear with everyone got this concept let's try to do this one now right hypertrophia right gaze and it is right head tilt so right hypertrophia the tilt is not opposite if it was opposite it would have been rectus it's the same so this is oblique muscle gaze opposite is superior gaze is not opposite gaze is same so this is inferior so the muscle that we have got is inferior oblique muscle is it a uh, is it a depressor or a elevator inferior oblique is a elevator so the opposite side of hypertrophia opposite elevator right ka opposite left so this is going to be left inferior oblique okay this is going to be left inferior oblique right so this is how you would be solving the uh this is how you would be solving the questions on the park three step test tell me what do you think would be answer to this one right hypertrophia increasing in opposite gaze and same side head tilt what will be the answer to this which muscle do you think is paralyzed here see so this is right hypertrophia gaze is opposite theek hai tilt is same side tilt is same side so tilt the opposite is rectus tilt same is going to be oblique so this is a oblique muscle gaze opposite gauze is superior so this is a superior oblique muscle superior oblique is a depressor right superior oblique is a depressor so same side as hypertrophia so this is going to be right superior oblique not the left superior oblique okay so remember this is right superior oblique palsy basically in this patient okay that is how you'll be solving the question so those were the quick mnemonics that we have learned in ophthalmology a uh, quick run on whatever we have learned the various tricks uh, give me a minute don't know what has happened not able to see this ठीक है सो रिमेंबर द फर्स्ट वन इज डे 15 दैट इज डायरेक्ट इज इरेक्ट वर्चुअल देन द ड्रग्स व्हिच एक्ट बाय डिक्रीजिंग द प्रोडक्शन इज एबीसी और कैब लेटानोप्रोस्ट एफ2 अल्फा इज बाय इंक्रीजिंग द फ्लो 
Star guards, you will see the stars, the yellow flecks. Pupil periphery is corpus nodule, surface is basacus. Muscles of iris is neuroectoderm. Inferior oblique, oblique muscles, the primary action is torsion. For sin, superior is intorsion, inferior is extorsion. Then you have right sided six nerve palsy, the head will be turned to right, the direction of action. And inferior is the superior lobe that's parietal, contralateral, right side is going to be left parietal lobe. And this is the PARC three step test. Remember the tone gauze. Tilt opposite is rectus. Gaze opposite is superior. Remember this opposite and same is with respect to hypertropic side. Okay. It is with respect to hypertropic side. Okay. So that was uh, about the today's ophthalmology mnemonics. Quickly in next five minutes, we'll be starting the uh, KBMD episode. That is Con Banega MD on the Unacademy app. It's a free live class. Uh, you can join in. Uh, the link is shared on Telegram group. I'll share it again on Telegram group now. And after that at 10.30 p.m. We will also have the YouTube live class for the grand test strategy uh, for the FMG students. All right. Thank you so much everyone for joining in. I hope you have enjoyed it. And uh, keep studying, keep revising and keep winning. Anjali, I'll come up with a session on astigmatism also soon. Okay. Thank you.